What is a stock pot? My stock pot is a container that receives every drop of my gold refining waste solutions after the gold has been removed. These waste solutions often contain platinum and palladium in trace amounts that are too small to try to refine. My stock pot is kept full of copper so that the traces of platinum group metals can cement out onto the copper and accumulate as a black mud that settles to the bottom of the container. The black mud will contain gold, platinum, and palladium that can then be recovered in concentrations that can be removed and refined. The stock pot serves two main purposes. First, it serves as a place to allow traces of precious metals to be recovered and second, it is the first step in the waste treatment process. Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Sri Tips and the day has finally come for refining the stock pot. Uh, but before I do that, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the reactivity series of metals. In this list, the metals that I work with in my refining mostly are zinc, iron, there's some nickel in there, tin and lead of course when we do a gold filled scrap, copper is a big one, tungsten I don't see very much, we could see tungsten if we did some contacts that contain silver with tungsten backs on them, but I don't, I've never done those, so I don't see much tungsten in my refining uh, experience here. I don't see much mercury, but uh, down here, the precious metals, we got silver, gold, and platinum. Now, according to this series of metals here, the metals up here are highly reactive. In fact, if you took potassium or sodium and threw those metals into some water, they'd react violently and explosively. So these are the most reactive metals up here. As we go down the list, the metals become less and less reactive until we get all the way down here to gold and platinum, which are very, very unreactive. These are very stable elements. If you'll take a look at this here, this uh, text says that a metal can displace any of the metals which are lower in the series. Now what that means is, I'll give you an example. Uh, today what I'll be doing is refining the stock pot. I keep my stock pot full of copper. If you look down here at copper, it's way down here in this list. So if I put any metals in solution in my stock pot that's full of copper, these metals down here will cement out onto the copper as a black powder. That's the powder that we'll be dealing with today. If there's any of these metals above copper in solution, those metals will not cement out. They will stay in solution. So what I'll do is I'll get an effective separation of the metals below copper, they will come out of solution and fall to the bottom of the stock pot as a black powder. These metals up here will stay in solution. If you notice, I have iron higher up in this list and my uh, waste treatment bucket is full of iron. So the process goes like this. The refining, the precious metals uh, waste from my refining go into my stock pot that's full of copper. In the stock pot, the copper and any trace amounts of precious metals, they trade places. The precious metals will come out of solution onto the copper and the copper will go into solution. So when that reaction is complete, what I'll have is these metals precipitated out as a black powder uh, and the copper in solution. I'll have a uh, 
concentrated solution of copper with these metals forming a black powder and falling to the bottom of the stock pot. Once the reaction is complete in the stock pot, and I'm certain that all the precious metals have cemented out onto the copper, what I do is I take the stock pot, set it off to the side, and allow it to settle for several days. And then I'll so siphon off the saturated copper solution and leave the uh, precious metals behind to accumulate in my stock pot. Once I get the copper siphoned off, I allow it to settle just to make sure none of the solids came over with the copper solution. Once that's settled for a couple days, then I siphon this copper solution into my waste treatment bucket that's full of iron. In the waste treatment bucket, any metal below iron, including the precious metals, but any metal below iron, the cobalt, nickel, tin, lead, and copper, will cement out onto the iron as metallic particles that fall to the bottom of that bucket and the iron goes into solution. And what I'll end up with is a bucket full of iron in solution with all these metals below it cemented out. It is very important for any refiner at any level to be very familiar with this reactivity series of metals. Understanding how this works is the basis of some of the refining techniques that we use to separate precious metals from base metals. Alright, here we go. We're going to start this video by setting up a new stock pot. Here's my old one down here. It's been in operation for about three years. As you can see, it's full. So what I'm going to do, I've been saving these solutions from my gold refining uh, this is waste solutions from the gold refining. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start this new stock pot with these uh, solutions. I'm going to add some copper. I've got copper fittings here that I got from a uh, uh, retired plumber. I'm just going to throw a few of these in here. And then we're going to take the waste solutions and add those into the new stock pot here. In accordance with the reactivity series of metals, copper being higher in the list will cement out the platinum group metals from this solution. Alright, I'm going to add the second container now that I've been saving. I was out of room in my stock pot, so I've just been pouring the uh, gold refining waste into these uh, flasks. this is the birth of a new stock pot yeah if you take a look at those fittings uh, some of the precious metals that are uh, residual in those solutions are already starting to cement out onto the copper they've changed colors that means the metals are uh, cementing out on that copper after looking at this flask here I see that there is a uh, significant amount of gold mud down in the bottom of it so rather than add that to the stock pot what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get it into this beaker and see if we can get it settled and uh, recover this gold no point in putting it up in our stock pot it's uh, gold that can be recovered just like it is so I'm going to pour it in this beaker and let it settle and we'll get that out of there before we go any further Okay, here's the gold that was in that uh, temporary stock pot. It's a significant amount. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let that settle out and I'll add the liquid to the stock Look pot. Look over here at the stock pot, the newly initiated stock pot. If, if you can see that, there's already metals starting to cement out onto the copper. Those are going to be platinum group metals, mostly. All the gold should be out of this solution, but the platinum is going to be uh, cementing out on these pieces of copper in here. You can see it falling off to the bottom already. 
it's just been in there for about five or ten minutes and that's an example of how the reactivity series of metals works the platinum group metal cement out onto that copper and the copper goes into solution all right I've got the uh, new stock pot up here I'm gonna go ahead and set that down here and we're gonna trade places here this is my old stock pot it's the one that's full of precious metals and the one that we're gonna refine so I'm gonna pull this out Put this one in its place, the new one. I'll put the bubbler back in. And we'll just let that one uh, let that one react. This is my old stock pot with the accumulation of cemented precious metals. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a cover on it. And I'm going to just move it over here and let it settle for several days. What I have here is two tubes. One's got some copper, about six grams of copper. The other one's got about the uh, same amount of silver, pure silver crystal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little distilled water to each of these. And then we're going to add a little bit of nitric acid here, concentrated nitric acid. See if we can get both of these things to go in solution so we can do a couple of experiments to demonstrate how the reactivity, reactivity series of metals works on these uh, metals. put these up here on the heat now add a little bit of heat get those things to dissolve here I have two of the most common solutions that I deal with I have copper in a nitric acid solution I have silver in a nitric acid solution here I've got a piece of iron and here is a piece of copper and what I'm going to do is demonstrate that in accordance with the reactivity series of metals here that iron being higher up in the list and therefore more reactive will displace the copper and copper being higher in the list than silver will displace the silver so we're going to go ahead and try that experiment right now watch what happens Okay, notice when I put that copper in the silver nitrate solution, how fast the silver forms on it almost immediately. Here I'm going to add a little bit of distilled water to make sure that the solutions are diluted down a little bit. Notice that the uh, silver nitrate solution on the right there, okay, this is speeded up about eight times. The silver nitrate solution on the right immediately turns from a uh, clear color to a blue color. There was a little bit of excess nitric in there. That blue color is from the copper going into solution and you can see the silver cementing out there and accumulating around the piece of copper. There's a little bit of red fumes in there. That's from the excess nitric. It's dissolving that copper as this reaction takes place. On the left, we've got the uh, iron in the copper solution and that uh, reaction is much slower than the uh, copper and silver reaction. see the uh, silver is coming out of solution onto that piece of copper there. It's all pure silver metal and the solution has turned a bluish green color so the copper is going into solution the silver is coming out of solution. Over here we've got a piece of iron in a copper solution. I don't know if you can see that or not but the, uh, the iron is starting to go into solution and the copper is cementing out onto the iron. Okay, my two solutions have been sitting here for about 12, 14 hours. 
as you can see the uh, silver is all cemented out of that solution and turn the solution blue over here we've got the uh, copper is cemented out onto the iron and is falling to the bottom of the tube there so the iron's going into the solution and the copper has come out of the solution in accordance with the reactivity series of metals what I have here is a shot of the new stock pot with no air bubbling to demonstrate how important that air bubbling is as you can see the cementation process is happening down at the bottom of the bucket where the copper is but since there's no stirring the metals above it that are in solution are not coming in contact with the copper so I'm, I'm gonna turn the uh, air bubbler on now and watch what happens so you see the difference here now that I got some stirring action going on there that stuff will start rising up and uh, mixing in there and causing the uh, causing the uh, the metals to come in contact with the copper and uh, allow that reaction to happen much better well we got to take a look at the reactivity series of metals and how that works and how important it is in refining it uh, we use that in refining as a vital tool to uh, learn how to separate those metals understanding how that thing works is so important because if you don't understand the reactivity series of metals it can not only help you but it can end up hurting you for example if you've got some uh, precious metals going into solution and you've got some iron present in that reaction what will happen is in accordance with the reactivity series of metals be it either gold or silver if you have either of those two metals going into solution and there's some iron present then what will happen is those uh, precious metals the silver and the gold will cement right back out of solution just as fast as they go into solution onto the iron and that will happen in a loop and it'll end up wasting a lot of chemicals taking uh, a great deal more time than it should so uh, the reactivity series of metals can help you or it can hurt you okay we also got to take a look at the uh, starting up a brand new stock pot and charging it with some copper fittings copper wire can be used in the stock pot as well uh, I have used copper wire in my stock pot but what it does do towards the end of the life cycle of the stock pot I quit using the copper wire because it puts tiny uh, slivers of copper wire in the uh, in the black mud down at the bottom there and so uh, I'll either use some bus bar or some copper fittings uh, when I uh, get towards the end of the life cycle on the stock pot so this will conclude the uh, part one of this video I think it's going to be a long one, so I'm going to break it up into parts right away. This will conclude part one. Thanks for watching.